my hunch is this is more likely to be resolved through the political process than through uh, the court process. But again, the, the, the two different processes are synergistically related. Don't Ask, Don't Tell is a sort of odd policy. It has lots of odd features to it. Um, it's a compromise. Um, Clinton originally wanted to uh, get rid of the ban on, on lesbians and gays serving openly in the military. Instead, it shifted the focus as the policy was crafted to focus not on orientation, but on behavior, not on identity, but acts. And the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy has been challenged in court by a variety of gay and lesbian plaintiffs. Um, and at the trial court level, a variety of courts have found Don't Ask, Don't Tell unconstitutional um, or have found that the particular plaintiff um, who's been discharged because of his or her sexual orientation shouldn't have been discharged. Some of those decisions have been uh, reversed on appeal, um, and uh, uh, some of them have been narrowed in such a way that they allow the um, discharged gay or lesbian service member to continue to serve um, without actually undermining the overall policy. Most appellate courts um, have decided that deference to the military is the way to go. And so Don't Ask, Don't Tell has been upheld by appellate courts um, on this idea of deference to the military. The interesting thing that's sort of changed now is you have an administration that has announced, as the Obama administration has announced, that they want to change the policy. So there's a question about whether they're going to defend the constitutionality of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Sometimes litigation that gets brought gets brought as a part of a social movement um, as, so that the, the plaintiffs that we have in some cases are kind of, they're almost model plaintiffs, model citizens. They're role models. They are the people that we want to make the public face of policy change if we're an advocacy group. You also have um, you know, people who are legitimately aggrieved. They're justifiably upset and have the right to bring their case to court. We can see court decisions uh, feeding into public opinion, uh, pressuring uh, legislative and executive branches to do certain things, just like we can see uh, legislative decisions and executive decisions affecting and influencing the courts. So the, the, the three branches, although they're separate, do interact in a variety of ways. It then becomes part of a political strategy, well, what's the best we can do in, with these folks who have been wrong um, and who want to challenge and challenge the current legal regime and make change?